In this video, we download a native Windows installer for ESBR and apply it on a Windows 10 computer. Folk have also used it on Windows 11 with similar results. For those who are not in the development community, the current installer is located on the one building site. If you click on the installer, it should download. The installer includes the version number of ESPR that it's related to. If you click on the installer, which is about 240 megabytes, it will take a few moments to set itself up. And if we look as we use the installer, we're going to find the usual dialogues coming up. It's open source software, so accept the agreement and carry on. There is a brief document that says some of the things that it's going to install, some of the things. Please read that. Oh, there might be some useful information in it for you. We don't need a shortcut menu. But it is going to put it into the C drive in ESBR. So let's watch that happens. Click in the install and ESPR now arrives on the C disk. It takes a moment to unpack the various files. Usually the installer sorts out the kind of associations between the operating system and the ASPR model files, but um, occasionally we might find that there's a problem there that we'll have to sort out. So if we look in ESPR, we see the usual folder structure, including a documents folder. You might want to go and look in there. Um, there is quite a bit of stuff, including a new Spanish version of the strategies document. Other than the training and validation models, of which there are many, there is a models folder. And if we go and look in that, the important thing is that there is a command script in there called ESPR, which is, if we click on that, we should get the ESPR project manager starting up. So this is a good sign that it started up. So we quit that module. What we're going to do is copy this script. And then we're going to go down to the users folder. And in there, we should have a models folder, create one if not. And in that models folder, let's paste in that script. And if we double click on that script, just to double check that in fact, it's still able to start up the project manager. Yes, that's true. Okay, so while we're at it, let's see if we can open up an example model. We'll pick one, ah, dealing with natural ventilation. How about an explicit trauma shell wall model? And we ask it, it's gonna say where it's getting it from and what the name of the model configuration file is that we'll be working with. And then um, it needs to copy that model into some location that we nominate. And so here we're saying we've in models and we're going to create a thing called Tromwall, which is uh, the name of the model folder structure. So let's proceed. And if we click OK, ah, we see that's created a folder there and then it's going to do a copy routine and it's going to warn us. Ah, but it couldn't find it. So sometimes the refocus process does not work. We've got the model there, so we're gonna exit the project manager and go in and click within the Tromwall 
into the CFG folder. And then um, if we look at, there's a model configuration file. If we get its properties, we'll see that the configuration file itself is associated with a script called the SPR. So we should be able to simply click on the model configuration file and start up the project manager focused on that model. And there's a warning. And in this case, it opens up. Of course, in the command window, we can also just start the project manager of ESPR and give it the name of the configuration file and hit return and that'll start it up. So if that's the way you like to use it, that's all right. Oh, but is the rest of ESP actually working? Well, what we want to do is perhaps just to be sure, set up an environment variable pointing at where the executables for ESPR lives. And that, if we edit that, that is in C, uh, colon backslash ESPR slash bin. Now, that might be belts and braces probably works without it, but then some people also might also set up in the system variables and change that path to also include the CESBR bin. So let's go back and check and see if the rest of things are working. Can we actually start a simulation from our model? So I'll go into the simulate simulation yeah, it's just warning me what might show up in the future. And I'll go into the presets and choose a short run just to see if it works. I'll ask for an interactive run. It's past the name of the model configuration file to ESPR. And it's going to ask to run it. We initiate a simulation. That's where it's going to put the results for the building side and for the flow side. And let's monitor the progress just to see how it's working. Pick temperature between zero and 30 degrees, go and run that simulation. Oh, and let's just provide a little bit of documentation about the run we're going to make. And then please continue on. And we see we're getting some feedback here about temperatures. Um, in different parts of that model as the simulation progresses. So this is all as expected in ESPR. Save the results, yes. Okay, and our next task will be to find out, okay, is the results analysis module also working? Yes, it starts up. It's being passed the name of the results file. Um, it opens up. Let's go and do some inquiry about things. How about uh, some zone energy balance reports? So there's zone energy balance. I click that and say I would like integrated over the period of the simulation, both gains and losses, and it scans the information and pulls up a series of reports here. For each of the zones, we have a balance within some fraction of a watt over the time period. So results analysis is also working. So pretty much we've got an ESPR system that is fit for use. You can also, of course, run it from within a PowerShell. That starts up just fine. And you could also use Windows Terminal to get there as well.